everyone, Mr. Merkid here, and today's part two of the hardware ID login. In this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to take the ID we actually got and stored to this label here, and we're going to be checking the label if it's contained in some sort of file on a server somewhere. If it is, then it will let us use it. If not, it will just close the tool. Um, so yeah, let's get right started with this. Uh, instead of using or me typing it out again. Because we've done this many times already, we're going to be using the same method. Uh, we want to go to the function that we created to check from a Dropbox file. So if we just come down to where we created it, uh, we can use this, this will be fine. I just want to take this part because it will save us a bit of time and I will explain it if you're new and watching this video. So pretty much we want to create a new function so we can just come in here and let's make it public because we might have to use it uh, in upcoming episodes here and we can call this check hwid and inside here um, obviously we want to end the sub as well inside here public sub god so we want to paste what we just copied uh, and we want to create like a link so the way we're going to do this is we come into Dropbox and we want to create a new text file. Now I'm just going to be calling this HWID and let that do what it's got to do. Uh, so we'll open this and this is where you'll store all your allowed hardware IDs. But we'll, we'll store them in later. What we want to do now is we just want to uh, right click on this file and press copy Dropbox link and you should see this down here so pretty much that's copied the link for us now we just want to paste that in there like that and change the zero at the end to a one so it becomes read only uh, like that uh, this code here will be in the description you know to save you a bit of time as well um, but most people watching this probably should have already seen this from previous videos of mine anyway uh, so underneath here we've called it remote command to make it a bit more relevant, let's just call this, um, we can just call this hardware ID, like that. Uh, so we want to come down and we want to say if uh, hardware ID dot contains, and we want to check if it contains the our label, because this label is what's going to display it. So this is label 12, so we just want to check if label 12, not sorry, label 12, dot text is contained in our file here and obviously it's not because we didn't add anything to that file yet but this is what we do so if it is contained we'll let them use the tool so we can say let them use the tool I'll just comment this out and then we'll say else if they're not allowed we can shut the program so we can say application dot exit like that or you could display a message saying something like oh you're not off or something along those lines. You can t entirely do what you want if they're not off. Um, so that will be that. With the label, we can't actually copy it to get the codes because you'll want the user to send you the code to off them. Uh, so what you, what you'll do is we're going to be using a text box just just for the fact that we can copy this and we don't have to write it all out. We'll just get a text box too, and when we're checking for the hardware ID we'll come down into this function and we'll set the text box oops I'm going to do that this text box is number 33 so we'll just set text box text box 33.txt that will be equal to CPU ID 2 just so we can copy that and if we launch this up now it's actually probably going to shut it because we don't even contain the file so that was a stupid mistake by me or not so we can copy this little code here and remove that now if we come into our little file and paste my one there now that's all I really need the text box for is to get mine uh, we can come back in and we can call this function uh, in the form load function as you can see we made a function called check hardware ID so we need to call that now we can call this after the try of connecting. Let's let's just put it here. Actually, we don't, we don't even want them to connect. 
we'll put it just after get CPU because it needs to um, actually get the CPU for this to work. So we can stick that in there like that. Now, if we run this, we should be allowed to use it. So it should just open as usual. Uh, what I'm going to do is take this out, but copy it, and I'll save it. And what I'll do now is I'll relaunch it to show you that because my one is no longer in that file, it's going to just open and then shut right away. As you can see, that is a it's it's shut. We didn't even get to see the program open. Uh, so that would be what happens if you're not contained in this little file. So th that would pretty much be it. But obviously, we want to make things look a little better, um, which I'll be doing. I'll be making one more video to this series, which will be the next video. And what I'll be showing you is how to. Uh, when the program gets opened for the first time it will display a, a separate form with the display in their hardware ID and that is what they'll need to send you uh, other than that what is what is going to happen is so once they've opened it for the first time it's going to trigger a boolean which is going to be equal to true now and this is going to save so when they open it again it will check the boolean see if it's true or false and if it's true, the the form that they see the first time is not going to open anymore. So they're just going to see the tool now. So it's going to be like a one-time form to get the hardware ID, if you understand what I mean. So that's what I'll be showing you next time. So hopefully, if you did enjoy the video, you could leave a like and a comment. And I'll see you next time.